podcast is back. The Blitz Package. Uh, just a new format. We're going on YouTube, rocking it hard. Uh, a lot more we can do with the YouTube version. But it's still the same podcast, still great content. Uh, we're going to go right in. We got 10 minutes max on this one. We're going to title it Undefeated versus Those Who Need to Defeat Somebody. All right, A number of undefeated teams, but there are some undefeated teams who could run into some trouble. And there are some defeated teams right now who are over uh, who could definitely pick up some wins later on. Uh, again, Preston Jackson, my guest, Doug Pugh, you've seen him in the mornings breaking down your high school football games on the Facebook, on the, on the Big County Preps Facebook page. you also seen him on the Facebook page breaking down your college games. Uh, so right now, Doug, let's jump right into it. A number of different teams who are undefeated, uh, in your opinion, what's the first one, that the team that jumps out right now that could see some trouble down the way? Um, they could see some trouble down the way. Uh, once, and I and I put trouble in quotations only because of how tough the district is. But a three and East Bay team, which is a damn good start, by the way, um, with Durant and Plant City uh, in the next two weeks, that could get tricky. But I'm 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 liking what the Indians are doing so far. So. Uh, to say that they could have trouble down the road is um, a little uh, relative. There's some nuance to it, but the schedule is probably only getting harder from this point on. But I certainly think that uh, East Bay has had, a, A, a damn good start, and B, that schedule is going to get tougher, and I'm really excited to see how they handle it. Beat Freedom 34-13, to game one. Traveled to Brandon, beat them by 10 points, and what I heard was a really good game, 30-20. to and another win versus Riverview at Riverview, 24-21. to They've got Durant, then they travel to Plant City, who Bright House just has their game on the week, and we saw Plant City has some promise. Uh, Robinson, they should ha- take care of Robinson. Leonard, depending on how well Leonard does. And then Bloomingdale, who's surprisingly uh, competitive this year. So Plant- East Bay, excuse me, not Plant City, but East Bay's schedule looks like it's going to be a little rocky once they go into Durant or once Durant comes to them and then they go into Plant City, it doesn't look like it's going to get any easier for the Indians. Um, Jesuit, 2-0. and Doug, I think they'll be in great shape. I think Jesuit right now, they'll be in control of their district. They've got Jefferson coming up. They should end this season undefeated. I don't see a team right now who's going to give them many bumps in a row. Again, that's going to be motivational speech for somebody's locker room as they'll say, well, BCP said this. Uh, well, Jesuit right now is proving that they're a good team over the last few years. Last year they were undefeated. This year I think they're definitely going to go undefeated again with their schedule. How about Lake Wells, Doug? They're 0-3 right now. Are they in trouble or will they pick up some wins? Um, they're in trouble. Well, they're in trouble if they can't beat Haynes City. Now, I don't mean to tiss Haynes City like that because that's what it sounds like. But I, I, I'm trying to figure out. I'm looking – because Sebring is, is not an easy team to play. That's that's really not going to be uh, a game that I would expect Lake Wales to win. Uh, they've also got Lake Gibson. Um, the way Lake the way Lake Region has started, it, would, it seems like that would give them some issues. Um, they've got to go to – they've got Nature Coast, Winter Haven, uh, Auburndale, Bartow. I mean, I'm looking at this schedule right now, and they're – there isn't a single game that I'm going to pick them other than maybe the Lake Region game to win, which would mean that that, that's a one in nine season. Mm. That's not good for a team uh, over in Polk County who's traditionally one of the powerhouse teams uh, in that neck of the woods. Now, let's go over to Pinellas County. Lakewood, always blessed with athletes. Corey Moore done a tremendous job with that program in his last nine or ten years. Um, they're sitting 0-2 right now, Doug. The Lakewood Spartans sitting 0-2. I plan to go visit them tomorrow at practice. Um, losses to St. Pete, 14-12. Bowles thumped on them, 54-12. Now they go to Vanguard, okay? But after Vanguard, Doug, I think they should be uh, in pretty good shape. They got Dixie Hollins at home. They'll travel to Dunedin. They'll pick up Bogey at home. Pinellas Park is going to give them a fight. And then they had that rivalry game, Gibbs, at the Pernellas Park. So Lakewood could start off the season 0-3, Doug. 
But their next four to five games, they can definitely get four. They can definitely get at least four wins out of those five games. What say you? I agree with you on Dixie. I agree with you on Dunedin. Lakewood at Pinellas Park is a bright house game. That is, that's going to be a battle. Um, I, I think they can beat Gibbs. I also think they can beat Tarpon um, in spite of Tarpon's 7-up uh, and defeat of Largo. And really what it comes down to in terms of whether or not they have a, 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 a fantastic season is um, because the bogey game is not really a gimme, but I'll give them that, that bogey game as of right now. Um, so Dixie, Dunedin, uh, Gibbs, bogey, Tarpon, Northeast is going to be a tough game. So Lakewood right now, I, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, you know, they could get six wins out of this season and finish the season six and four or, or, or you know, seven and three even if they can – you know, get a game from Pinellas Park and, and beat them, I think that's a fantastic uh, way to, uh, you know, that's a good season for yourself, especially given the fact that, you know, Bowles and Vanguard, and, and you know, Scott Bowles 54-12 to 12 was a lopsided uh, effort. I shudder to think what uh, that Ocala Vanguard team could do to Lakewood uh, if Lakewood doesn't, uh, you know, show up to play four quarters. That game could get ugly. Um, it's not like Lakewood can't play with Vanguard. I'm not saying that at all. They've got plenty of athletes present. Um, that Vanguard team is something special. They're a top five team in Class Six A, which is probably the best classification in all of the state of Florida right now. All right, I got a different question. I'm going to pose to you. Middleton and Blake both undefeated right now, Doug. Um, first question is which one loses first? Second one is which one? Which team has the best record at the end of the season? Oh, man. Well, let me ask you what you think first, because I, I got to I gotta take a look at this and, and process it, because quite frankly, uh, and, and, I, and I love the fact that we're talking about middle school play. Let me make that clear. But quite frankly, when was the last time we were able to talk about Middleton and Blake like this, in right? A, in a positive so, light. In a positive light. In a positive light. Right. So I need a moment to digest this. So let me look. Let's All take right. a look at Middleton. I've got All right. got Middleton pulled up right now. So, Middleton. I like their chance. I like their chances at Robinson. Yep. Um, versus Blake might be one hell of a game. And uh, go for the bands too while you're at it. Right. Uh, for that game, um, I like their chances at Chamberlain. Uh, Middleton Spoto will be a battle because I see similar teams in both of them. I think that they would probably lose to Jefferson, and I think that Berkeley Prep team is a lot better than people are giving them credit for. So just thinking here, Robinson, Chamberlain, Spoto, that would give them five wins. That's their floor for me, five wins. Uh, with a possibility, a possibility if they can get that, uh, if they can get Spoto and uh, Blake, they could, they could get to seven and three, man. I, I agree. I like, I like Middleton's ceiling to be seven and three, okay? Blake, I'm going to throw this out at you, man. I like Blake to at least hit 7-3 and three also. Losses coming against Armwood. Losses coming against Hillsboro. All right, maybe a trip-up game worth King and Chamberlain in the season. But, boy, I think I think they could end up being 8-2 and two and miss the playoffs. Okay? I, 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 they'll have Brandon here. They've got Brandon at home coming up this weekend. Then they have Middleton. Let's just say they beat Middleton, all right? Now they travel. They'll get Onwood at home. Lato, Hillsborough, Chamberlain, King. If all well goes with that Middleton game, I like the ceiling for Blake to be 8-2 and two, at worst 7-3 and three this year. And where that would actually, where we would actually see history made, depend because let's face it the teams that are on that schedule with between armwood brandon steinbrenner who who should rebound from their start um you know those teams but let's think about the playoffs for next year and you know what i think they only have nine i think they lost the game so they may only have nine this year right i think they're going six and three they could i think six and three is a great season right right and six and and three seven and and two and three and, and, and with losses to Armwood and Hillsboro, 
and and then you know that's uh, you know that would actually have them out of the playoffs. But you know what's interesting is that if all those teams that are left on Blake's schedule, Preston, live up to their expectations from the season on out, a six and three Blake team could be in the playoffs. Come when come the new system next year, and you know what? The Let's not of, we, of the district and their schedule. We could always we could be getting ahead of ourselves. Also, remember Blake defeated Hillsborough last season. Okay, uh-huh. now now this is a new right. year. Both teams with new players uh, and new attitudes. Is a completely different team. Hillsborough okay. is a completely different team. So this year. on on paper, and um, you would say Hillsborough on paper, you'd say Hillsborough win this will win this game. However, however, the way Blake's been playing, their confidence rolling into that game, the win last year could motivate them to play this game really close and end up winning that ball game. That's just being objective. All right. So even if I'm going to say right now, even if I'm going to say that Hillbrow's a, a, a tad better than Blake right now, and I can see Blake ending their season with just two losses, maybe three at the max. And I think that would be an awesome season for those Yellow Jackets. Now, let's keep it moving as we're winding down. Tampa Bay Tech 2-0. Doug, when do you see Tech losing their first game? Um, well, <laughs> I'm sure some folks at Armwood are probably thinking, well, it's probably going to happen, uh, what, on the 30th of, of September? Because they've got... Uh, Armwood got planned that week before, if memory serves correct. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't uh, – listen, I'm not going to be some sort of silly hot take machine here and say that Tampa Bay Tech is, is a, a sure lead pipe block to, to beat Armwood. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. But what they're going to do is they already house Wharton. They're going to beat Bloomingdale. They're going to beat Crest. They're going to beat Plant City. They've already beaten Plant City. Um they're gonna beat Leonard. They're gonna beat no, Durant. No, no, they got beat... they got Plant City at the end of September. Okay, so they've got they're gonna beat Bloomingdale. They're gonna beat Crest, Plant City, Leonard, Durant, East Bay. They're gonna win. I think that the the only game that Tampa Bay Tech loses this year is the Armwood game. And even that, right now, you better come and see me uh, later on in the season because uh, I believe that's October seventh when they play. Yes, sir. And um, so I would not even ask my opinion on that game uh, until I've had a chance to see Armwood play plant the week uh, two weeks before that uh, because we know let's face it Armwood's got the best backfield one of the best backfields in the entire nation but we also know they're trying to get Devin Black some work so uh, I think that that game right now is shaping up to be man one of the all-time greats but as wacky as this season has been thus far I don't know. That could end up a run clock. Who knows? But here's what I do feel confident in saying, that the floor for Tampa Bay Tech, meaning the minimum for Tampa Bay Tech, is 8-2 and two this year, which is pretty damn good, right? Uh, so, uh, yep. uh, it, it, you know, it, it, we've seen them make it to the third round of the playoffs after four losses, having to win multiple games just to get to 500. So if they've sorted it out like we feel like they've sorted it out, Tampa Bay Tech is a minimum 8-2 and two team. Um, they could be nine and one uh, if they handled all their business through the district, and the Armwood game is the only blemish. Hell, I mean, I wouldn't even go so far. I mean, I, I am going to go so far as to say it would not shock me to see them ten and zero. But that Armwood game, let's be real, that Armwood game is not a lot whatsoever. Going over to Pasco County, last question of the day, last team we're going to address. We're going to address Pasco High School. Sitting 0-2 right now, Doug, and I think we both agree that Pasco High School, the Pirates, may be in trouble. Just a bit of history, okay? When Tom McHugh took over at Pasco in 2007, they were 6-5. 2008, 12 wins. 2009, 9 wins. 2010, 11 wins. 11, 2011, 13 wins. 2012, 12 wins. 2013 is where we had to drop off 7 wins. 2014, 6 wins. 2015, 4 wins. Doug, do they even hit 4 wins in 2016? Um, no, because they've got, uh, let's see, North Marion, who is still pretty good. 
uh, even though North Marion took it on the chin last week. Um, Mitchell, no, they won't. I don't expect them to beat Mitchell. I do not expect them to beat Sun Lake. I expect them to beat Lando Lakes. Um, I expect the Springstead game to be a, a tough game, but I expect them to lose. I also expect them to lose to Zephyr Hills. So at the time... Man, I can't believe I'm even saying this. It looks like they could be in for a one in eight season because the game with golf was canceled. Man, that's so. That, that's so. I, just, I mean, you can go and look on the history page. I, I, I mean, I, I certainly wasn't alive the last time uh, golf or Pasco won one game. I know that, and I, I turn forty next year, so that has to, that has to be some sort of record. All right. Well, we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, Man, that's crazy to say. We're going to leave it at that about Pasco High School uh, podcast. Well, you know, we can't. We just can't do them like that real quick, though, without actually double checking. You know, I can't. You know, that's a that's a legacy program, and in the interest of being correct, I gotta see from my own two eyes. Preston, the last time they won just one game in a season. Uh, I've got it. I've season. got it pulled up right now, Doug. Um, two thousand and five and two thousand six were lean years, but they still won two games in three year and three games respectively. It looks like si- they won two games. Looks like sixty seven. The last time they they won one game was nineteen seventy eight. Seventy eight. Sixty seven and seventy eight. Yep. I was born in seventy seven, so I was I was one year old the last time. That's thirty nine years ago. Thirty eight. And okay. and check so seventy seven. In 77, Pasco was 8-3, and three, district champions. 78, 1-9. and nine. In 79, they got a new head coach. That's Bob uh, Bowling. And he went 5-5. Five and five. Yep. And then, I mean, it's, it, 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 you see the cycle. You can see the cycles in their, in their records, how they came through. But it's just astonishing to see the level at which they've fallen off. Now, granted, let's start giving some credit to Chapel. Because that Chapel team is a revitalized team, and uh, you know that's a that's a pretty good team. And that district with Zephyr Hills and River Ridge uh, and Hudson and Anclote suddenly looks pretty fun. Uh, if those teams are going to be putting up points on each other like that, so um, you know that's what we have is a lot of parity in Pasco County right now. And uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I think Pasco needs to have some. Some legacy teams that are just thumping everybody that can also take their show outside of the borders. But overall, as a fan, uh, it's pretty fun to, to experience what's going on in Pasco County right now. That's the Blitz Package, Preston Jackson, Doug Pugh. We'll be back.